Hey, good evening. It's Monday, April 22nd, and welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. Really great to start the week with you. Um, tonight, just a really cool setting. You've got the moon is rising. I'm looking into the sunset, so it's one of those really special times, but tonight we're able to get it so you can actually see the moon back there. And you also see kind of a path behind me. And that actually works well with what where we've come to in this chapter 4 of Proverbs where David is the one speaking to his son, Solomon, warning him to value wisdom, make it the most important thing that you, that you engage in, it's your most precious possession. But then he goes on to warn against the way of evil. And he's strong about this. And in verses 14 through 17, we get a picture of just how strongly David is warning us, how the Holy Spirit is warning us, stay away from evil. Don't mess with it. Tonight we're going to look at verses 14 and 15. They have six steps, six warnings, six commands to keep away from evil. Tomorrow... In 16 and 17, we're going to see the addictive nature of evil. And why is that? That's the danger of this kind of a checkbox mentality. Oh, I didn't do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to avoid, you know, and we think we're good if we've checked all the boxes. Evil is pervasive. It's corrosive. It'll destroy us in very subtle ways because it's deceptive. But let's look at the warnings here in verses 14 and 15. This is what uh, David is telling his grandson and his son. Do not set foot on the path of evil. Don't set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evildoers. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it and go on your way. There are six directives, six commands there to avoid evil. We might immediately think of a passage like 1 Corinthians 15, 33. says, don't be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals or good character. And that, that is a warning in itself. But this section in Proverbs 4, and anyone familiar with the Proverbs would have realized that this quote that Paul's making from a Greek playwright, a, a, a Greek poet, Meander, uh, that he is going to give us the reason why Paul is so urgently warning don't be deceived, bad company corrupts, good morals, good character so we have the why listened here because evil is deceptive misleading, enticing addictive that's what the Holy Spirit is telling us therefore don't mess with evil I'm not talking about cloistering ourselves away. We have to engage with the world. We have to engage with evil folks. But we have to do it, seeing the danger that's there for us. And that's why these passages are so helpful. Evil is deceptive. See, this is not a time for curiosity. Like, let's see what happens. It can't be that bad. You can't do that. If you are with people who are not consciously going after God, they're not perfect, but they're consciously going after God, then you have walked onto the path of evil. There is no neutrality. There's no middle ground. We like to think that there is, where we're good on one side, evil on the other side. And in the middle, we can walk this path. That's a myth. That's the enemy's myth. So let's look carefully at what's being told us here in these two verses in Proverbs 4. And they go together in classic Hebrew poetry form. So David is saying, don't set foot. Don't enter in to the path of the wicked. That's what we're being told here, the first command. In other words, don't hang with, don't hang out with, don't watch, don't binge watch. If you were folks who are in a predominantly evil mindset where they're not going after God, that's the key for us. 
if we're not going after God, we're headed towards something that's not good. Remember, we've talked about this a lot. Life is worship. You cannot trust your motives or intentions. You may think that they're pure. They are not. Like the path is on the screen right now. It doesn't look that dangerous, does it? But if you don't know where it leads and you're not prepared, this innocent looking path can lead you to horrible destruction. So that's the first warning. Don't set foot, don't enter on the path of the wicked. And then don't walk in the way of evildoers. Literally don't take strides with them. Don't come alongside them, embrace them and walk with them. And one of the things we see here a lot in the Proverbs and the New Testament picks up on it is this idea of walk. Where our feet go, if I was walking down that pathway right there, I would be headed towards a particular direction. In fact, just because I'm not sure doesn't mean I'm going to be safe. We've got to be careful. Don't walk in that way. Don't, don't come alongside without being aware of not being conscious of your mission. And then in verse 15, there's, we read two commands in verse 14. Now in verse 15, avoid it. Actually, the term here in the Hebrew is stronger. It's rebelling against it. Flout it. Go against it. Don't be passive. You don't have to be nasty or angry, but you've got to be aware. Evil is not your friend. The enemy wants to corrupt you. So really, literally, the beginning of verse 15 is not just avoid it in the passive sense, rebel against it and run to God. This is where we remember we've talked about this just recently. You're either being influenced or you're influencing. And if you're not influencing, then you are on the path of wicked. Rebel against it by being influencing. Don't travel, don't travel on it. Again, there's that walking language again. Don't go along with it. Don't walk down this road so you, I'm not going to make waves. I'm just going to get along. That's the trap. The fifth, the fifth command. Turn away from it. Turn aside. Run from it. And then six, the sixth command, pass on by, go on your way, stay true to your vision of walking after God. Let me read the, let me read the Proverbs again, 14 and 15. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evildoers. Avoid it, do not travel on it, turn from it and go on your way. This would be a great passage to have at the ready to think about to internalize, not just memorize, but internalize so that you're constantly, when you're on the path, like you see on the, behind me, that path, where is that path taking you? Tomorrow, we're going to be looking at how the addictive nature of evil. Evil is as powerful as any drug that you can take, any substance that you can get hooked on. Evil is more powerful. And verses 16 and 17 will display that for us. Such a powerful, clear warning that we're given here in Proverbs. Listen carefully to the wisdom from a grandfather, David, who has seen what happens when we're not careful and we don't care about the path. We don't fight against it. Evil is there to reach up and grab us. Thanks for being here tonight. That's the, uh, that's the thought for this night. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much for the privilege of being with you. By the way, a brand new outro tonight. Uh, our friend of the channel, Natalia, has, has done a new outro, so take a look at that. It's, she's done a great job, as always. You have a great night. Bye-bye.